Hi guys, welcome to the channel. My name's Tom. Following on from my previous first video about plein air painting, painting outside, I'm actually here in North Devon in the UK at a place called Westcott Barton. And this is a venue where I'm teaching a, um, a painting retreat for, well, basically three days, but I've got a couple of days here by myself. And Westcott Barton is an unbelievably beautiful place. It's 95 acres of private land. It's woodland, it's countryside, there's streams, there's lakes. There's a small, well, a large farmhouse with a load of converted buildings. And we're gonna have a whole load of students come and stay here. And we're gonna take them out painting. Hopefully if the weather stays um, on the land here. So what I'm doing now, I've got a couple of days before the students arrive is I'm going to continue my kind of plain air adventure and I'm coming out to explore the land. I got here yesterday, it was a bit rainy, um, but still beautiful. It's a place that you can't even put into words really how wonderful it is. You just have to come and be here and experience it. The wildlife is amazing. There's deers wandering around in the garden. We've got hares. The amount of birds I've lost count of already. There's lizards and snakes and slow worms around and not another person for miles, so it's fantastic. But like I said, I'm gonna continue my plain air journey today. So I am coming out onto the grounds, the land, and um, I'm gonna do a little bit of sketching. So I am actually gonna be teaching both watercolor and acrylics, and actually people can bring whatever medium they want if they wanna do sketching, pastels, oils. But those are the demonstrations that I'll be doing. And as I found out last time, getting out on the coast in Pembrokeshire, I've forgotten how hard it is working from life. It's fantastic, it's fun, it's really exciting. It's an experience in itself, regardless of what you actually produce art-wise. And actually that was the biggest takeaway from that video. But today I'm really going back to basics. I've got a pencil and my sketchbook, and I wanna focus on strong compositions, really thinking about the scene, what it is that I want to capture, and looking for very, very simple shapes of light and shadow. So today is perfect for it because we've got a nice strong sunlight, but it's not too harsh. So we're going to get really strong light and shadow shapes. And although painting and working on an overcast day has its benefits and also its challenges, working on a sunnier day, we get stronger patterns of light and shadow. And that can actually make things a lot easier um, as long as it's not too harsh or as a painter or an artist, sometimes we either have to make the light and shadow a little bit more contrasted, or sometimes on a really heavily contrasted day, um, maybe we even have to tone back the contrast a little bit. But it's gonna be an exercise in tone, looking for subjects, and just having a bit of fun uh, with the pencil, as always. Thank you guys, so, I've basically spent the last over an hour kind of wandering around, about 40 minutes wandering around the woodland, 20, 25 minutes wandering around just the garden um, right by the main house. And this represents an entire tiny, tiny percentage of the amount that I could do. But I still haven't actually got out <laughs> my drawing stuff. And I think this is a really quick, interesting point. Number one, I've kind of just been exploring and soaking it in and there's little diversions and interesting little paths everywhere, loads of wildlife to see, some amazing birds, the scenery is great, hear the raven again in the background. So partly I've just been kind of soaking in the atmosphere and I think even as a painter, an artist, whether you come here to sketch, whatever, whatever it is, there is definitely something to be said for soaking in the atmosphere, taking your time before you settle to do anything because it can be too easy to rush into something. So that's number one, there is an element of that going on. Number two though, I do think actually there is like a little bit of resistance. Um, you know, there's, especially with the painting, less so with the sketching, which is why I've chosen to do it. But even so, I find myself kind of um, resisting doing it. There's always that little bit of fear of failure or fear of not quite being able to achieve what it is that you want to achieve. And actually, sometimes these things are easier when they're just in your head and you don't actually <laughs> physically do them. So there's a bit of resistance there. And then thirdly, and this is probably in some ways the most important thing is, I'm actually completely overwhelmed by opportunities and options. It's not like when you snap a photo and you've edited everything out and you just have this nice clean 
photo that you can maybe copy or at least um, use as inspiration. There's so much going on here. You're soaking in so much. There's so many potential um, opportunities for a piece of art or a sketch or whatever. It's almost like overload and I don't know what to choose. And this is a huge part of plain air painting and painting from life is, is struggling to actually home in on anything. And that's what I'm finding here. So I think the two final points are that sometimes with the fear of failure and the resistance, you have to fail in order to push forward with your work. You have to, you have to just do it and some things won't work out and that's okay. And then I think that same thing applies to being overwhelmed. You just have to pick something. And to start with, you might make a few weird and bad decisions. Things might not quite turn out as you want them to. But as you get your eye in and you get your practice in, you're going to home in on subjects a lot quicker and know how to tackle them a lot quicker. So the, the bottom line point is actually I just need to pick something and get on with it. And even if those first few are not great, that's going to open the door. It's going to open the floodgates. So let's go and see what I can actually find to draw. Love the way that the light is falling across this wall. Love the way that the wall on the right is cast in shadow. Light kind of shooting across the top of the rocks here. All of this is like perfect watercolour subject fodder. And again, it doesn't look like much, but it's just these little patterns of light and shadow. Shadow against light, light against shadow, all of that sort of thing makes for really interesting watercolour paintings. What it's doing is it's getting me to think in a certain way. And when you start thinking in a certain way, you're gonna start painting in a certain way and it's just gonna benefit your work. The other thing that I'm looking for is not so much in this one, but if I can find, whilst I'm exploring, a foreground, a middle ground and a background, it makes things a lot easier. So here's a great example, foreground, middle ground, background. And we're gonna make the foreground, in this case, is gonna be quite dark. It's gonna come forward. It's gonna have a high contrast. It's gonna have more detail. That's gonna really help bring it forward. The middle ground is gonna have less contrast and be slightly simpler, but still have some points of interest. Then the background here is gonna be much simpler. You can, you don't have to stick to this, but you can just get progressively more detailed as you go come forward, progressively smaller shapes, simpler and more wet into wet in the background. So looking for light and shadow, big shapes of similar tone, focusing on interesting compositions, shadow against light, light against shadow, and looking for foreground, middle ground and background are some things that I think will really help your painting and sketching full stop, but particularly when you're working from life. So, I <laughs> finally broke the seal. As you saw, they're not like, they're barely even um, representational drawings, they are just some sketches of some shapes and exploring light and shadow and that's the whole point that's what I wanted to do that's why I wanted to kind of ease my mind into looking in a certain way and I'm now going to explore a little bit more and I'm going to maybe do some slightly bigger sketches a little bit more refined a little bit more worked out so again let's uh, see what we can find Right guys, so despite wandering around loads, I keep coming back to this bridge. This is the same bridge from the other angle. And I think it's particularly at the moment, the way the light is falling across, catching the top here, and we get these very strong shapes. I think this would make a fantastic painting. You can really focus on the abstract shapes of light and shadow. We've got kind of a foreground area, a middle ground, and then a very soft generic background, which would trap the light. We've even got the, the angles of the, um, the paint up the sketch are all kind of pointing to here so we can have a nice shot of bright green light here as almost like a focal point and the focal points in a nice area so by just exploring and designing and playing with shapes you end up with a story to your painting and that story is the thing to kind of hold on to as you paint so you don't lose track so this is a fun one I seem to be drawn to a lot of man-made stuff Um, I'm gonna, I've got two more days to explore, so I'm gonna explore away from this. But I think partly it's for me, because I'm naturally drawn to kind of abstract shapes of light and shadow, the man-made stuff, they're a little bit easier to see. So, so that was cool. So um, that made a big difference, just playing around with light and shadow. Little doorways like this, which are quite abstract, but especially in watercolor, they'd make great subject. And then these two are particularly good subjects, I think, because not only 
Are they quite simple in terms of light and shadow? They've got the foreground, middle ground, background, strong, interesting light and a strong, interesting composition, which is great. One thing I also wanted to talk about was um, the amount of decision making that has to happen. The, the reference doesn't give us everything we need. So, for example, if I'm going to have a little bit of this shadow coming in here, but I make it, I have to work out exactly what tone I want it to be so that it looks like it's a bit more of, of a reflected light. So it's maybe not as in shadow as this. And then here, how much do I simplify this? If I don't make it dark enough, it becomes the same tone as this here. And we maybe lose some of the definition. We don't always need definition, as we know, but sometimes we do. And that's an important defined line. Um, so that needed to be really simple and dark. And I can then use that to the dark here to carve out the negative shape of the archway in shadow, but also carving out the negative shape and trapping the light of the archway in sunlight. And that really makes this painting punctuate that with a few little bright greens and things like that. And you've got a really strong feeling of light and um, you can have a lot of fun with this. Not dissimilar to this subject, little decisions to make. And you can see these were kind of 10 minute ones. So they're, they're barely proper drawings. They're more sketches still, but I've just stopped, started popping in a little bit more detail, taking a little bit more time to refine the shapes and see what I can find. And look at the difference though, in just spending an hour, hour and a half from the confidence, not necessarily the end result, but quite timid, kind of finding my way a bit, remembering what it is that's important, but not necessarily executing it well. Then an hour later, we've got this sort of stuff, which to me is much stronger, much more confident. And that's just an hour. Imagine doing a few days of this, how much more confident you would feel. So that's it, guys. I'm taking a little breather and then I'm going to get back out there and do a little bit more. But I think what I've learned from today is the power of actually just getting on with it and doing it. Feeling quite timid, not very confident to start with. And then the simple act of just doing it not only am I suddenly seeing subjects everywhere, but in a more positive way, not feeling overwhelmed, but actually I can't wait to get out there and do some more drawing and painting. I've kind of my eyes in a little bit more. Um, so just get out there and do it. That's what I've taken away from this. The confidence will come pretty quickly. Your eye will come pretty quickly. And I think the biggest thing I've seen is that I'm starting immediately to trust my artistic intuition. And it doesn't matter what ability you are, all of us have some level of knowing what looks good to us. And that's the most important thing. And the big thing when you first start out and as we go forward is actually learning to trust your instincts when it comes to picking a subject, just as we need to learn to trust our instincts with what colours look good, um, what we think looks good as a composition. All of that comes with time, but it also comes with just getting out there and doing it. Yes, there's the technical elements which we have to learn in order to do that, but in terms of choosing a subject and what we want to say about the subject, actually a lot of us have that in us already and we just need to learn to trust it. So that's kind of my takeaway point from today. I'm going to get out there and do a little bit more drawing and then a really great little bonus is that this venue, which I'm teaching the retreat at, happens to be only 10 minutes away from some of the UK's most premier surf spots outside of Pembrokeshire, obviously. So the sun's out, the swell is most certainly up and the wind is offshore. So I'm going to head off and see if I can find some waves to cap off a really amazing afternoon. Thanks for watching, guys. Do feel free to subscribe for lots more to come. All the usual tutorials are still going to be coming out and links to where you can find me, including the newly launched online watercolour school are in the description below. Until next time, guys, happy living, happy painting, and we'll catch you soon.